Brexit. It's all about trade until it's not about trade. And then it is about trade um, until, again, it's not about trade. It's about sovereignty or something else um, entirely. But, of course, back in 2016, the Brexiteers, and ever since then, have been very, very desperate to try and prove that Brexit was worth it, that leaving the single market was worth it. And it's all going to be, you know, sunshine and roses. Doesn't matter that most of our trade, again, is done with Europe and us putting up barriers are because, again, we are now a third country, which when you are a third country to the EU becomes a thing. Um, you then have to start following other rules. And, you know, if you decide to change regulations or anything like that, that might stop, you know, products going into Europe or, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that might happen. It's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> when the more you the more and more you start to think about it, the more and more of the idea it becomes mm, maybe we should be in like the single market customs union. Take Northern Ireland, for example. It's doing very well compared to the rest of the UK. Why? Well, it's in the single market customs union. Um, much to, of course, the chagrin of many Brexiteers who again don't like the fact that it's doing well so well and don't like the fact that it could be of course used as an example to say well if northern ireland this economy is doing really well compared to the rest of the uk why did we leave the single market customs union to, to begin with so and of course this is where the intrepid liz truss enters into our story because well Liz Truss was desperate to open, shall we say, pork markets, but also cheese, because, again, uh, her constituency is famous for the cheese that it makes, and apparently um, cheese is really important to the British economy, um, even though when you look at economically, uh, cheese, um, it's worth more than fish, but it's not exactly, shall we say, as worth as much as our manufacturing industry is worth to the UK, which is, again, taking a massive wallop because of Brexit and now the trade barriers that it now has to compete with, which, well, didn't have to think or even worry about before. But, of course, let's go diving into this before we uh, continue. So, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off today's link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much uh, to all those people who do help support the channel that way. And of course, there are the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there's the YouTube uh, subscription button where you can help support the channel. And you get access to loads of emojis, different badges and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's go diving on into this. And this one today, our story comes from a Canadian example. So this is once again a, an example of another country going, what on earth are they doing? <laughs> you know? But of course, let's have a look at it and see what the Canadians have got to say about this. So this piece is from CT News, with the title of Cheese Not on the Table in Canada-UK Trade Deals as Britain Seeks Market Access. British Foreign Secretary has often been mocked for a preoccup preoccupation with cheese. It started eight years ago when Liz Truss expressed outrage in a speech to a party's annual conference that we import two thirds of our cheese, she raged. This is a disgrace. Now Truss is facing another battle over cheese, this time with Canada. Britain wants greater access to the Canadian markets for more than 700 varieties of cheese, including Stilton, Cheshire and Wensleydale, a crumbly variety originating in Yorkshire. But Ottawa has made it clear it does not want to see more British cheddar, let alone artisan varieties such as the Stinking Bishop, the Renegade Monk, and of course, the Helford Top on Canadian fridge shelves. During the first rounds of negotiation on the UK-Canadian trade deal, Canada told Britain that a large quota for British cheese is not on the negotiating table. When it was a European uh, Union member, Britain was part of the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement with Canada, giving it access to Canadians' cheese market. After the UK left the EU with a, again, continuity agreement, as we've said before, that continuity agreement, despite what many Brexiteers said, was not a trade agreement. So anyway, it continues. And it said, if Britain wants more access to Canadian markets for its cheese as part of its bilateral free trade agreement, it will have to knock on Brussels' door and get its part of their dairy quota back. The point is, we have already provided a volume, 
uh, into the EU deal, and the British left there without taking it with them, uh, she said in an interview. That's an issue that they need to resolve with the Europeans because the Europeans have their quota. Godale said that the UK's request for extra access for British cheese on top of the access given to the EU is what the Canadian negotiators consider to be pretty much a dead end. You are talking about a double concession, one that we have already made to the EU, and the request is a big is being made by the UK is yet for another one on top of that, he said. The High Commissioner of Canada uh, values its trading relationship with the UK, adding said that he's confident that a multilateral uh, beneficial deal will be reached. But if Canada is to allow the British to export at least more cheese, it would involve a, quote, major commitment of compensation to dairy producers. So <laughs> I wonder how I wonder how happy, um, you know, the Brexiteers are going to be that they're now having to pay Canadian dairy farmers to sell their cheese in, in Canada. Hmm. Don't think they're going to enjoy trying to explain that one. Um, of course, in Canada to make up for their lost incomes. In 2018, after the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement gave the US fresh access to the dairy market, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that he would compensate Canadian dairy farmers. Canadians' dairy industry is worth over $7 billion in 2020, and according to the Dairy Industry Commission annual report, there are over 10,000 dairy farms in Canada, most of them in Quebec and Ontario, with an average of at least 92 cows per farm, it said. And of course, until the end of uh, next year, Britain will be able to keep exporting its cheese to Canada under that trade continuity agreement, the UK's trade department said. This allows the UK cheese exporters to access the Canadian market tariff-free under the EU portion of Canadians' World Trade Deal Organization uh, tariff quota rate. As part of the 1995 WTO agreement on agriculture, Canada established a tariff uh, rate of quotas for cheese and other dairy products. The quotas set out uh, quantities of the dairy that could enter Canada, so with little to no duty. For Britain, a full-fledged... Uh, trade deal with Canada is crucial after Brexit uh, left it looking for fresh tariff-free markets. As we said, that was always going to be the case. We were going to be desperately trying to do these deals, and these trade deals aren't just done very quickly, which, as we've said before, these trade deals done with Australia and New Zealand, them being done that fast is really worrying. I, I often think there will be more consequences that come out because of these trade deals. I really do think there will be. So anyway, it continues. We want to negotiate an ambitious and comprehensive new agreement with Canada that will, quote, strengthen our close and historic bilateral trade relationship, said the UK government trade spokesperson in a statement adding the relationship was worth about $34.5 billion in 2021. In March, the UK and Trade Secretary uh, Anne-Marie Trevelyan flew over to Canada to announce the to announce with the Canadian's Trade Minister Mary Mary Ning, uh, I think I say that a bilateral negotiation to officially begun. A sign now of how seriously Downing Street is again treating the trade talks. On Thursday, Prime Minister Boris Johnson appointed uh, Marina Miller, a senior Tory MP and former Culture Secretary, and of course a woman and equalities minister, as the new trade envoy to Canada. In a speech to the House of Lords in London earlier this month, Goodale reported on the progress in the talks, saying that both sides are optimistic that a good uh, th that this can be as good as the CTE and that continuity agreements were, and we can still do better when Canada and the UK negotiate a deal face-to-face -face, face -face directly with each other. Um, this deal will not be as good as the EU one, purely and simply for the fact the UK is a far smaller market than the UK one. And as I'm sure as we've found out in the past, when we looked at the numbers and we looked at what is actually in this trade deal, probably not going to be as good. That's what history has so far told us. So, like Goodale, the Canadian uh, uh, said that it is confident of a free trade deal with Britain will be reached, enhancing cooperation in a number of areas, including on renewables, sustainability, and a digital economy. Canadian values its relationship with the United Kingdom. They are um, an important trading partner, and a trade agreement with the UK will be very good for Canadian businesses, she said in a phone interview from Thailand last week. But 
Uh, she was also firm about their need to protect Canada's dairy producers. And that means uh, keeping more British cheese out. I have been very clear, and our government has been very clear, that we will not provide access to our supplied managed sector, she said. That has been very clear about this from the get-go. The Canadian dairy sector now produces over a thousand different varieties of cheese, including uh, ewe, uh, goat and buffalo varieties, as well as cheese curds used in the in the quablish, I think I say there, dish, oh, poutine. <laughs> uh, poutine's very nice. Um, and at least half of Canada's cheese is made in Quebec. It is home to a number of artisan varieties, including uh, Blanc Marie, uh, the Blue Hermit, and Oka, a very puffed, very popular, puff, a very popular semi-soft uh, rind cheese. Perry Lampton, the president of the Dairy F uh, Farmers of Canada, has also made it clear he will fiercely protect the Canadian cheese from British interlopers. He said, validated that the issue of trying to access the Canadian dairy market was not on the agenda of the trade talks. Canada's protectionist stance towards the dairy industry may have uh, pleased farmers, but it also has caused some tension with close allies. Earlier this month, New Zealand launched a formal trade dispute against Canada, accusing the trade uh, federal government of trying to break its promises of giving access to dairy imports under the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Biden administration also recently said that it was asking for a second uh, dispute settlement panel under the US-Mexico-Canada agreement to review the trade dispute with Canada over its dairy import quotas. So, once again, as you can see, things are not going well. It's very likely that Yes, the Canadians will get their way. Um, that cheese is certainly not on the menu uh, in this trade deal. Um, and as, of course, when this trade deal eventually comes about, I am perfectly sure that, once again, as we've looked at the Australian trade deal, the New Zealand trade deal, the, the um, Japan trade deal, none of them were anywhere near as good as the EU deal that we had already. And if anything, especially when you look at the... Um, Australian trade deal is big trouble, big trouble for future farmers. So, you know, if Canada has been very clear that this is like, you know, asking for a double, you know, point in this. And of course, Canada, when it does this trade deal, will have to go to the EU and say, oh, by the way, is this trade deal all right? So there will be um, multiple consequences. And it could be very well that Canada even though it doesn't have a, a ball to play in the Coast of Northern Ireland uh, conflict, the EU may say, look, um, you can see what's going on in Northern Ireland. Just hold off it until, you know, it's sorted out for us. <laughs> it's very likely they could put pressure on that as well. And they'd be right to do so. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, America even put pressure on Canada not to do one until at least the Northern Ireland protocol situation has been, uh, shall we say, firmly ironed out. So, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next.